Good evening, Cove Church. My name is Winston. And I'm Stephanie, and we want to welcome you back to our home for the third week of our Advent devotional. Yes, we already have the first two candles lit, and we will be lighting the third one tonight. Um, before we get into this week's devotional, let's just talk a little about where we've gone so far. Um, you know, Advent is this time of reflection and anticipation where we talk about uh, how Christ came at Christmas, uh, how he comes in our hearts daily when we let him, and that he will come again. And uh, so during these devotionals, we've been opening up scriptures to the Old Testament, reading the prophecies of, of what the Messiah was to bring. We've been reading the gospel accounts of Jesus, how he came into the world and and what he brought with him and, and what we learned from that. And then also the New Testament letters like from Paul, where he's telling the church how to prepare for Christ's coming. Um, and so the first week we talked about how to, um, how to anticipate Christ's coming, how to look for him. And the second week uh, we got into how John the Baptist calls us to prepare for Christ, to prepare the way and uh, how we can be preparing the way for him in our hearts, even today. And this week, we're going to talk about how Jesus blesses us with his arrival. Yes, yeah, so we'll be in Zephaniah chapter 3, uh, 14 through 20. Kind of one of the back corridors of the Old Testament. You don't often read from Zephaniah, but we get to tonight. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you, he has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with your oppressors at that time and I will save the lame, gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Right, so Zephaniah is saying a lot. He is anticipating a lot with the Messiah's coming. And we may read all that about, you know, the oppressors um, being removed and, and gathering all the outcasts and really like these real world changes and go, is this just, is he being dramatic at the Messiah? Is he really going to do this? Uh, is this just overly poetic? We can wonder those things, especially if we tend to think that, when Christ came, he only came to do something like a saving work that we experience only after we die. But Israel is really hoping for something even more immediate than that. And I think we ought to take it seriously. Uh, and we really have to. When we look at Matthew chapter 11, we're, just, we're gonna read that. And this is Jesus talking about what he has come to do, the signs of that he is the Messiah. Go ahead and read that. It's Matthew 11, 2 through 6. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. So again, some pretty amazing fulfillment happening here. We're talking about the deaf being able to hear, the blind receiving their sight, the poor having the good news preached to them. This, this is more than just some after death rescue plan. This is something that is impactful to their very world right then. And I think this is also something that we can hope for too in Christ coming in our lives. Real life change, making our world a better place. Um, you know, he, he comes to rescue 
our world on just about every level. Because like the carol says, he rules the world with truth and grace. And he makes the nations prove the wonders of his love. It's, it's something that can be experienced here and now in our world. And that's some of the joy we get to bring into our hearts this Advent season. Um, but I, I think this begs the question for us, you know, as Christians, because we know we, we're doing Christ's work among us as his body, right? Until he comes again. We are continuing the work that Christ started. And how do we do that? When, I mean, it almost seems like it's too big of a, a challenge for us to think about doing that kind of work in our world. Um, but Paul, uh, if you want to turn to Philippians 4, he has some advice for the church as we look for Christ's coming, as we wait for him to draw near, that this is how we do his work. This is how we embark on that. Why don't you read that? 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So there it is. The God of peace makes his home among us and helps us in this work to bring about these good things in the world. Yeah, the God of peace rules with truth and grace. He sets the precedent for us. He says, let your gentleness be known. Specifically gentleness. He rules with grace and he asks for us to be gentle and loving with one another, which is not really what our world looks like right now, but this is what he calls us to. He calls us to have strength in being gentle and being graceful with each other. And uh, I think that's something we all need to hear right now. Yeah. Uh, Philippians 4 has a poignant message for us, I think. Um, you know, we're called to live uh, with a radical alternative to what the world gives us. We're supposed to be people of thanksgiving, uh, prayer, um, and thinking in, upon and doing those things, which uh, really welcome in Christ's kingdom. So let us strive to do that this Advent. That is what we're called to do to be partakers in this promise, to bring about the reality of the kingdom that the Messiah has ushered in. So we're gonna light our third Advent candle. And uh, we just invite you uh, to hold that peace and that joy in your heart. Uh, and we're gonna say this prayer together. God of hope, you call us home from the exile of selfish oppression to the freedom of justice, the balm of healing, and the joy of sharing. Make us strong to join you in your holy work as friends of strangers and victims, companions of those whom others shun, and as the happiness of those whose hearts are broken. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come, let us adore. 
no more.